Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today the topic is stem cell therapy for diabetes in South Africa. So there are two main types of diabetes. There's type 1 and then type 2. Type 1 is when your immune system attacks and destroys your insulin producing cells in the pancreas. That comes from a cause potentially genetics and possibly from an environmental aspect. Type 2 is much, much more common, and that's the type uh, you earn, so to speak. Uh, it could be a combination of uh, overweight, um, being sedentary, there's some genetics that play into it. There are differences around the world with regards to race, um, age, high blood pressure, and abnormal cholesterol can all lead to a person having type 2 diabetes. Unfortunately, diabetes is ridiculously popular around the world. Uh, in the United States, 11% of the U.S. population has it. 27% of those over age 65 have it. Worldwide, it's over 425 million cases. And a lot of Americans have what's called prediabetes, which is a chronic higher than normal blood sugar. In most of the countries where we have clinics, um, and South Africa will, is no different. The incidence of, of diabetes is actually just as high as it is in the United States, if not even worse. Um, in uh, Pakistan, uh, I think the Philippines too, it's like double what it is here in the United States. Complications that can occur secondary to diabetes that's uncontrolled or not well controlled can be pretty serious. Uh, cardiovascular disease, neuropathy in the hands and feet, uh, kidney damage is really common, uh, eye damage, foot damage, skin conditions can result, hearing impairment, Alzheimer's, uh, depression, um, and I should have put on there erectile dysfunction is a pretty common side effect of diabetes. So conventional treatment options for diabetes um, have all pretty much have the same goal, is to control the blood sugar and prevent future complications. Type 1 diabetes is typically managed with insulin as well as uh, dietary changes and exercise. Um, type 2 diabetes may be managed with non-insulin medications or insulin, uh, reducing the weight, um, dietary changes, and other lifestyle modifications, like stopping smoking. Um, and at last check, there are about 10 different classes of medications in the United States alone for, uh, for diabetes. So stem cell therapy, therapy for diabetes represents a new paradigm. It's a non-operative treatment that can actually help repair and regenerate damaged tissue in the pancreas. It can provide relief. It can improve uh, function in individuals. It's a low-risk uh, treatment that's outpatient and has been shown to be very effective. Our protocol involves a combination of IV and potentially focal injections. For instance, the IV works great for diabetes itself, and then if someone has neuropathy, um, you know, injections into the legs can be very beneficial. That's called a hybrid uh, treatment. So how do the stem cell biologics work? Well, there's at least six different ways that the stem cells work in one's body. Uh, one is paracrine signaling, also known as cell-to-cell -cell signaling. This involves recruiting uh, cells to the area, new blood flow called neovascularization. Uh, it can reduce uh, cell death. Uh, it shouldn't say neuron, it should say islet cell. But basically what's happening is it can uh, stop the cells from dying off and help them last and, and work longer to get better function uh, for the disease, the diabetes. Um, immunomodulation, you know, diabetes is an autoimmune syndrome. Basically the body is fighting against itself. It's destroying the pancreas um, and hence you know, a lot of the pancreatic functions. So the stem cells are very, very good at modulating the immune system to stop that. Um, there are other direct mechanisms uh, with, with the way that stem cells work in the body. Let's look at a few studies. Uh, here's one for clinical efficacy of stem cell therapy for diabetes, uh, a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is when you pull together a bunch of studies and then statistically um, calculate you know, what the outcomes were. This looked at 22 studies with a total of 500 and some patients. They received umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, and that's exactly what we use at our clinics. And it provided a significantly beneficial outcome in type 1 diabetes when compared to bone marrow mesenchymal cells, which comes from the patient, him or herself. So this is a donor that we use. The administration of stem cell therapy early after the diabetes diagnosis was more effective than later on. 
um, this can be a safe and effective treatment for those with diabetes. Here's a study, um, mesenchymal stem cells as new therapeutic approach for diabetes and pancreatic disorders. Um, and this is more of a basic science type study looking at the mechanism of action. But basically what you see here um, is mesenchymal stem cells act in numerous ways, and we talked about this, um, reducing inflammation, um, preventing scar tissue, um, helping more cells proliferate uh, into insulin releasing cells, um, and it can stop the production of self-antibodies against pancreatic beta cells. Um, and it's a very promising strategy for diabetes, pancreatitis, and pancreatic uh, cancer. All right, stem cell secretome as a new booster for regenerative medicine. The word secretome means basically just um, excretion. So what it um, puts off, and in this case, it's exosomes. We routinely use exosomes, which are stem cell derived, with stem cells together. The combination works fantastic for many conditions, including diabetes. As a cell-free way for regenerative medicine therapy, stem cell secretome, meaning exosomes, have great potential in a variety of clinical applications, prevention of cardiac dysfunction, neurodegenerative disease, type 1 diabetes, hair loss, tumors, joint osteoarthritis. All right, long-term effect and safety of Wharton's jelly derived, which is the umbilical cord, mesenchymal stem cells on type 2 diabetes. So this is a group uh, who underwent two IV infusions of mesenchymal stem cells. Um, the cell count was 2.6 times 10 to the seventh. That's 26 million stem cells separated a month apart. So they noticed that the glucose and the hemoglobin A1C measurements were lower in the experimental group up to two years. So not just like a month or two months, but two years. The insulin usage and the fasting C-peptide were significantly improved. Uh, so umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells was not only feasible and effective, but very safe. Now this is amniotic stem cells for type 2 diabetes. When you talk about birth tissue, you're talking about umbilical cord tissue, the amniotic fluid. Um, you know, they both work really, really well. Um, this was a small study with just four patients. They noticed that glycemic control improved dramatically, um, and overall they suggested that uh, it could improve glycemic control by increasing insulin sensitivity. So I just presented a few studies, but there's many, many small studies out there. There's early clinical trials. Our own experience has been fantastic. Stem cell therapy for diabetes is very safe. It's typically very effective. We've seen uh, excellent control of the blood glucose, improvements in hemoglobin A1C. Um, it can assist with some of these secondary complications like kidney function, improvements in erectile dysfunction, uh, heart disease. So we do know that high stem cell numbers are necessary. That's one of the biggest reasons that patients fail treatment is that they don't get enough. So typically we use a combination, as I mentioned, of IV infusion plus injections. Um, and umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells give fantastic results. I do want to mention that we don't use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. Um, they're just not ready to be used clinically. They can cause tumors. They can cause rejection. So we use the umbilical cord tissue. It comes from donating um, mothers after a scheduled C-section. They're regular, rigorously screened. The FDA requires that. Um, and they have both mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells um, in them. So with regards to our stem cell treatment programs in South Africa, we have two clinics. One is in Johannesburg, about 20 minutes from the airport. The other is in Umschlange, which is right next to Durban on the East Coast. The process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. There's no charge for that, no obligation, and it's confidential. You'll be assigned a patient concierge representative who will assist you with all travel logistics um, well, before that, the setting up the consultation and then getting you the quotation and then helping with travel logistics. We do provide free ground transportation from the airport to the hotel and the clinic. So our umbilical cord stem cell tissue comes from the United States. Um, our lab has a pristine safety record. Uh, we process according to the FDA quality assurance standards. In fact, we go above and beyond those QA standards. 
Over the past 10 years, our centers have done 21,000 stem cell procedures globally. We've never had a significant adverse event. Uh, patient satisfaction has been 85% year over year. These are pure, potent stem cells that also includes growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, uh, secretomes in the, the biologic. So start the process today by going to r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. That's our website for the, for the country. We get patients coming in from all over the country, plus all over the continent of Africa. You can also call us to set up the free consultation at 27-213-001-831. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.